because if you press and extend too early, you lose your athletic stance, which means you lose your ability to balance well against the outside ski. I'm Tom Gelly from Big Picture Skiing and you're tuned in to Carve's Technique Teardown. So here we have Charlie skiing a run in beautiful Zermatt, Switzerland. Now you can see, Charlie is obviously an advanced level skier. He's already able to create some pretty high edge angles. There's not really any skidding going on, but there's a few things that I'll point out now that are where it's getting him caught, uh, stopping him getting to that, ne that next level. So we come back here and a few things that, that happen through the end of the turn. See, Charlie's legs get quite split apart. So there's a lot of white light you can see between his legs here. You can also see that the inside foot is advanced further forward than the outside foot. This is a pretty good telltale that Charlie's lost his balance as he's tried to increase edge angle here and he's ended up actually balancing not on his outside foot but more on the inside one. It's sort of caught him and it's not happening just on one turn. Uh, a lot of the turns Charlie makes like here, the same thing happens. So that's the first thing. So like I said, at this advanced level, as you start to try and increase that edge, edge angle further, past about 45 degrees, it gets quite tricky to be able to stay with your outside ski. The next thing I wanna point out is just a little bit further early on in the turn. Now it's what, what he's doing with his outside arm. So see there's this reaching kind of look to it. So reaching towards the outside foot and also almost like a, a look of like he's sort of pressing or, or stretching his outside leg out almost to the point where he's losing like an athletic position and stance in his skiing. So two things that stand out and that I want to focus on today are this falling inside at the end of the turn, losing balance, and then sort of this pushing and reaching that's going on at the top of the turn. Because as with any skier, there could be a multitude of things going on. But today, let's just focus on these two because I think they're both going to help Charlie and you take your skiing and make it a whole lot more fluid. Let's look at some comparison with my skiing on the left and Charlie's on the right. And I want to point out something at the top of the turn and then something more in the middle of the turn. So first to the top of the turn. If you have a look at my legs as I start a turn, comparison to Charlie's outside leg in particular, this is where you start to see uh, a look of bracing already occurring. So Charlie's leg looks straighter and even the way he's got his outside arm held out to the side looks like he's already lost his balance a little bit too far to the inside, away from, from balancing on that outside ski. Contrast that at this moment where I'm able to keep my arms in closer to my body more compact, keeping my center of mass more together. So that's the first little indicator that there's something perhaps going wrong. And if you have a look at my outside leg, it's still got some flex in it and it doesn't look like there's an attempt for me to push against it, okay? It looks like Charlie is pushing to try and maybe bend the ski more or get pressure on it. I don't know what it is he's trying to do, but but that's the look that's there. And I often find a lot of advanced skiers think this is what they're trying to do to, to get more out of the turn. So top of the turn already, I would suggest Charlie doesn't need to go for such a rapid extension. You can even see if we come look on, it's not just one turn. This side, you see there's already a stretching out of his outside leg. We compare it to this moment in the turn with myself, doesn't look like I'm trying to stretch it, okay? And you can see it looks a little bit awkward on Charlie's body, and he's also having to use his inside ski for support because he's pushed his center of mass a little bit away from the outside ski. So first thing, perhaps be a little bit more patient and ride with the edges. And then this next tip that I'm gonna work on is probably the, the, the one that's really gonna help, and it's the sensation. So come back a little bit. There is a feeling that I have around this sort of middle part of the turn, okay? So around here. The feeling is that I allow my pelvis to drop more down, okay? So it's not inside the turn. This is what I think Charlie is almost thinking about doing. 
So we come back. You can even look here, it looks like he's stretching inwards. I'm thinking more down through my pelvis and that actually pushes my legs over and stops me from being braced but keeps me moving inside the turn so the skis can bend and turn around further. So I'm gonna use a Lego skier to help show this. So if we look right here, we come over to about that angle that Charlie's at at this moment. If you're pushing or pressing towards that outside ski perhaps a little too much, it would be like me pressing through the head of the skier. And so what happens here, the skier gets, uh, you know, secured in this position, but they're not developing any more edge angles. So pressure this way, this way into the skier, secures him into the edge, but then they're not going to develop further edge angles unless they try and push something, you know, push their knees in, which I don't recommend. Contrast this with what I'm doing on this side where I'm saying I feel a dropping sensation around my pelvis and my hips to tip my legs. So I come to this point, and then now I think about actually adding some downward movement. See the downward sensation is what rotates you around an axis. Okay, here, if I push this way on my fingers, all they're gonna do is bend in this direction. If I can apply this direction on my fingers, I can actually keep developing edge angles. And then you'll see on this particular one, it helps me to me create some angulation and keep me balanced as I do this. Now the result is through the end, because I'm not braced, I'm more balanced against the forces, I don't have to stand up as much as Charlie. So you'll see I'm able to flex and move out of the next turn from some of the, the pressure. I'm able to topple in with uh, a lot more ease. And let's have a look at the top of the turn again here. Notice we contrast the stretching out leg of Charlie looking for pressure. I'm just using my body weight. All I'm feeling the pressure on my outside foot is my body weight staying with my outside ski as I slowly tip in to develop edge angles. And then at this point, we go back and forth. You should be able to see the dropping sensation. This one I get even more edge angle, but it's more of a dropping down is what I feel. And the downward drop actually helps me apply pressure, just like the Lego skier here. Downward here actually helps press the edges in further. Pushing outward, not so much. Let's go do an indoor exercise. So then the next time you go out skiing, Charlie, next time you go out skiing, you're gonna be able to know this sensation and apply it to some turns. So let's jump over here and try that. So if you've started the turn well, like I said, trying to stay in your athletic position, not push, just balance as you go to move inside the turn, we should be able to get to about this point. Now it's at this point where I really feel this idea or sensation of my pelvis driving the, um, the edge angles further to help bend the ski. This is as opposed to, so here's the pelvis kind of drop position. What I sort of see with Charlie is more, there's like a push or an extension of his leg to push the pelvis in. So if I draw with my hand, I would say that makes the pelvis move like this. Okay, and I end up, if I, if I sort of do that, I feel like I, I actually can't develop like greater edge angles unless I put this leg here to help me move further inside. Contrast this, try this yourself, lean against a wall. Get to this point, feel most of the pressure against your outside foot. Now think about your pelvis weighting your legs and just dropping down with gravity. So it doesn't bend your knees, you stay strong in the legs, you stay strong in this outside leg, you don't extend it, but you let the pelvis push it down. Now to help with this idea, I'm gonna show with my ski pole. So if this is my outside leg in a turn, the ski pole, that what I feel a lot of people doing and what Charlie's doing is they're making an effort to push in this way, okay? Down the pole like this. Look what happens if I just keep a, a little bit of pressure here to maintain, say, the edge in the snow, but apply pressure with gravity this way, okay? I'm able to stay with the pole gripping if I've got a little bit of pressure here in my balance, but to help increase edge angle, dropping down. 
So I change that with my pelvis here, get to this position. I actually have to kind of relax my hip muscles and allow my body weight to push my legs down. So in summary for this carved technique teardown, I think there's two things for advanced skiers to try in their carving. One is this idea of uh, gradually increasing pressure throughout the turn by never really stretching and, and pressing against your outside foot. And you can see in his pressure data that so the pressure came on and then it dropped and then it came on and then it finished quite early. And that was in contrast to my turn, which consistently like the, the pressure came on evenly and was held and built throughout the turn. And that's a sign that I'm staying balanced against the outside ski and using the ski to help deflect me across the hill. A little further on through the turn, if you are, again, pushing to try and, try and increase the edge angle, you're gonna end up on your in, inside ski and not maintain the pressure building. Notice I talked about this feeling of letting the pelvis drop, let gravity have your pelvis, let some of the muscles around your hips relax. That allows the pelvis to cre create leverage on the legs. That's what tips you over. And the feeling I get is as that happens, I maintain an athletic position as gravity drops me there. So I would suggest even using, because I know Char Charlie has carve, the outside pressure monitor mode, which reads the um, distribution of how much pressure on the outside versus the inside. So as he, as he experiments with these two tips, I would like him to use that monitor mode to get real-time feedback on how that's affecting this uh, outside ski pressure score. So there we go. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode of Carve's Technique Teardown. I'm Tom Gelly from Big Picture Skiing, and I hope to see you on the next episode. Thanks.